I'm Christian Brooks. Grew up in Oak Cliff. Born in Methodist Hospital in 1950. I got into leather. A lot of people ask me uh, how I got into leather or what got me started. Or did my dad or somebody in my family have a leather business? And I said, no, I, none that I know of. I know some people over in Fort Worth at one time had a saddle shop over in the north side where my family's from. Uh, it's from the north side of Fort Worth. And they moved to Oak Cliff in, I think, in 1921, my grandmother did. But uh, I got into leather, actually, um, they sent me to um, to a camp, to a YMCA camp. They asked me if I wanted to go to camp, and I said, yeah. And they, they got me this one little 10-day uh, session to Camp Grady Spruce here in Texas on Possum Kingdom Lake. And, uh, gosh, I loved it. And... Uh, uh, they had a craft time there, and uh, I really got into to the leather kits. There was, you could buy a moccasin kit, or you could buy uh, a keychain, how to make a keychain, and wallets. Um, quite a few things that you could make and take back home, you know, to as presents. And... That's where I really got it into leather was um, Mr. Tandy used to come down between the sessions and bring the leather kits and all that. would come down and for a couple of days if I was staying over a session or two, I would uh, stay with him and he would teach me a couple, a couple of days. I'd be with him by myself and he taught me a lot about the leather, how to punch the holes and how to string it up and how to dye it and what not to do basically a lot of things not to do but uh, from there uh, that's basically where I got into leather uh, Tandy opened up Tandy leather store here in Dallas and I started buying tools and all the things you had to do to to make those kind of things and I started off making watch bands for a lot of my students I went to school with and uh, that's kind of where it all started making watch bands and wristbands. Today uh, the project is I'm going to uh, recreate the Stevie Ray SRV guitar strap I made for him and uh, the process how I made it from beginning to end and um, maybe I'll tell a story or two about Stevie and I along the way and hope you're going to enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed the thought of him wearing my guitar strap on number one until he left us. And uh, I was honored and still honored to, to know that he, uh, he enjoyed that so much. So here we go. Hope you enjoy this. Perfect. It's going to be great. Okay, so we're going to start off here with. I've got a little pattern thing, jig here I use for a clicker. I'm just going to draw it off and cut it up by hand the old fashioned way. This is a uh, two and three quarters wide. Some people like them thinner, and some like them thick. Curve. <laughs> Take a straight edge there and. Make sure that's up against there. And it's 
there's really two sides of the suede. You want to get the the good side up. And this looks like the good side. So I'm gonna start off with this first piece. And the reason why I'm piecing this together is because when I went I needed to make this strap. Somebody called me and said I can get it to him. He was playing in Dallas. And um, they said you got about an hour and 15 minutes before he starts. And I was like, holy moly. Uh, went out to my shop and I didn't really have a big thick piece of leather. So I had to kind of patch this thing together. I've made me a little jig here for it, but at the time when I did it, I just drew it on the leather and cut it out. You can mark on suede like this because it kind of puts a polish. If you bear down on it, It'll kind of polish the leather out where you can kind of see where the lines are. Sometimes I'll draw it out on a piece of paper and just lay the paper over and just cut through the paper. It's a one time shot. But I had to make me a jig because I had so many people wanted these. I've got a pattern to work out of, work from. There's one. I'd never really made a guitar strap like this before. What they call this is called a filigree. You cut the letters out and you fill the color you want in from the back side. And I'd had a gentleman come to me, he was a rodeo guy, and he wanted his initials put down on the bottom of his sh shafts. And that's how I did it. I cut them out and I put his initials down there and I said I'll just use that concept and do something new and different turned out all right Kenny Wayne Shepherd's got one um, you've got uh, Rick Derringer's got one. Leroy Cornell just did one for a
a couple of new people lately. Just did one for uh, Gary P. Nunn and Bob Livingston. Just did guitarist tracks for those two guys. Alrighty. So there is the uh, cutout. We're going to save those. find some of this here. This is the color that he had. Pretty close to it. Oh, just for the uh, general public, this is actually has SRV on it right there. This was the original pieces of leather that uh, I made a strap with. So it's pretty close to the color I can get. Not too bad. So, of course, this is only about 50 years old, so the, the leather is kind of, it'll turn dark. So this is what about the color it was. I'm going to cut a little shiny side. That'll be shy enough. How are we doing, boss? All right. So now what we're going to do is very carefully. This is a, this gets into scary territory. When you've done all this work, you gotta be real careful when you're brushing this. I use contact cement. People can use whatever they want, but it's what I've used for years. And I'll first go around it, hit it on the major spots, try not to have any spider webs. And always work from the outside to the inside because if you don't you'll do that and it'll drip down the edge and on the front so you got to be real careful not to you got to take that in there like that and come in here like that and go into it and then around that like that and then I usually will just take some enough and just touch that like that and it'll, it'll leave enough on there you gotta work kinda fast because this stuff dries almost did it there You gotta have enough glue on there where it's gonna hold that stuff down when you're sewing, where it's not gonna move on you. Then I kind of go back over and refresh it a little bit if I can. Just a little bit on there, make sure it's wet. Just kind of refreshing it. Especially at these points. Okay. Yeah, ta -da -da. Now here's the tricky point. 
you can do this. This is what I used to do. Try to find those. Try to find that point there. And go down here and find that one. Whatever letter you're going to be doing. If you're going to make one for somebody and you want to do their letters. Then I use those as reference points. Try to find the corner there. Got a dot there. You can put your finger on the back side and feel right there where the, in that corner. So there you go. And everything's backwards, so you got to kind of figure out what direction. Let's see, what is that? Oh, that's for the. Uh, okay. Well, what we're going to do, we're setting these cutout pieces in these holes that I just cut out. And I'll show you later on when I stitch it what it does. But you got to find that and kind of get it started. And you need a, a good cobbler's hammer if you can, but you can use any what you're trying to do is mold that down in those holes and it'll leave an impression in there kinda see what's going on there and that'll give you But trust me on this, and don't ask me why, it's physics or something. It always seems to be harder to get these back in the hole. It seems like there's not enough room. So this is what I do. I use this molding tool. And I'll find out where that, that ridge is and make sure that's... I learned this from a bootmaker. Her name was Sandy Kay. She wore, used to work with me down in Deep Ellum at Blue Suede Shoe. In, deep down in Deep Ellum in Dallas. Back in the 90s. And she was making boots in my shop. And I sat there and watched her one day making, cutting these pedals out from this rose. And she'd cut each pedal out, put each pedal back in that same hole, and I was like, wow, is that cool. See, I'm kind of off here, so I've got to find that. If you work with it while the glue's still kind of wet, you can move it. If you don't, wait too long, you can't move it. Just got to kind of feel around and make sure it's close enough. You can see how I get the edge of my hammer and I'm pushing it down inside the inside there now and boy it makes a difference if you can get that down in there and it's not lapping over the top too far or it's not lapping over over into here you want it on that side down in that hole and you can feel it if it's not up there it's kind of ridges up on you like it's not supposed to be Okay, I got 
the S in there. Let's get the R. You can see, see how much longer that, here's your dot, it's right, right here. And that thing's that much longer right there. It's just a little strange how things get kind of stretched out and won't fit back in there, but that's why you got to kind of get it to where it'll, all that will bunch back up in that hole, or you can kind of, sometimes I'll pull on it and stretch it like that and that'll help so that's what I just did try to get those points down in there first get those down in those points and you can kind of mess this in place but to be real honest on this deal I didn't do this DVs it didn't have this raised lettering like I'm doing now I just cut the letters out and I don't even know what happened to them. They got mixed up in all the scraps that I was doing them and I lost those cutouts. You know? But that's alright. It's just a piece of leather. Okay, one more to go here. Let's got to make sure you get it right. Huh. Because when you're looking backwards, a lot of times even the V it looks right because it doesn't matter. Like an A and all that stuff, but it could be different on each one. Sometimes it's not very easy to do this. You can see it's it's not a walk in the park. There we go. Sometimes when it's just too long like that, I'll just cut it off to make it fit in that hole. No big deal. If you don't tell, I won't tell. One of the most memorable uh, straps, I've made a lot of straps for a lot of people. My name is Joe Silva up in uh, Rhode Island. Um, when he came into town and spent a couple of days and I sitting here and made a guitar strap for him was one of the most 
the memorable times. Go check him out. He's on Facebook and all that. Joe Silva. He even wrote a book not too long ago. He's got good music. Great songwriter. Okay, well we're we're getting kind of close to putting this together here. So I slide those over like that. And, uh, I'm using a piece of oak. You can use veg tan, I guess, but it's a three to four ounce. I like it because it uh, um, it's rough on this side and it'll stay in place unless you want it to slip. Some people like it where they can take the guitar and slip it like this, but you need to find that out whether you want a rough back or you want a smooth back. I prefer the rough back because it stays in place. Noting again, I'm not putting the glue on like this where it's going to drip. You always go from the inside to the outside. Inside to the outside. Okay, so you notice that I'm lapping everything over so you don't see that edge because if it was up like that you'd see these edges so you don't see them that way because they shed they give you also dimension because of the shadow off of it too I like that but when I get to this point I'm going to reverse it around the other way So I'm taking this and putting it about where that is and that way I can lay that up under there because I want that to go back the other way. Because when it comes over your shoulder then it reverses and you want the shadows not, I mean I want that on top going down just like it is like that going down if not if I put this up under this one you would see that that edge it flows better this way at least in my opinion it does
this off. to sew. We got this far. I'm ready to put it on the sewing machine see how she rolls. start lifting up on you. But they'll kind of lift up on you sometimes around the edge. Once I get that done, I go across each one of these, hold those down where they won't fly up. Here's the fun part, the obstacle course. <laughs> What I like to do on these, you notice that I came up over here and I went on that side. This time I'm going to go move it over just a little bit on that side and that puts a loop over the top of that out there and it keeps it from coming up. So it holds that down, keeps it from coming up, flaring up out of there. See it holds that down, keeps it down in there. Put these levers close enough together 
you can you don't have to go each do each one it's kind of like a you just got to follow around it'll you'll finally end up back over here if you do it right see this is something I learned years ago I got tired of cutting each individual out you can see right here go right in between those two and then you can start back over here on the other one you'll we'll come back around there in a minute side of that one and when I come up for it I move it over and I come on the other side of it put that needle right next to the to the edge of whatever you really won't see it because it's black it look just like a little feather and that what that does that holds that that down and I come back here and get up here on, on the edge of that Another trick I learned too, instead of trying to go here and go back around and follow it, because this is so close here, I can come right there and start up this. And the reason why is because when you come around that, that tends to push this over. When you're coming around this feed, feed dog, tends to push this thing over, and it, this point ends up ending up over here sometimes, and it doesn't end up straight. So now I'm going to I'm going to keep this the straight back side of that R one more here and then I'm going to come back this way with it because a lot of times if not that ends up way over there and it doesn't look right so I come over here and I hook back up and follow that straight line kind of come out far like that so you can gives it a good point out there travel back and try to travel back in the same holes when you come back Yeah, and take 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 in that I had a, an hour and ten minutes, or I had an hour and fifty minutes to make this and get it downtown to the concert. I made this thing. I think I made it in forty-five minutes. <laughs> I think it was something like that. I got down. I had five minutes to, to spare. <laughs> All righty here. See, it's got one continuous thread. Alright, we're done with this part. Next step here is I'm going to cut the slots for the tailpiece. Some people will mark them off. You can uh, 
take your divider and mark off where you want to put them like this that kind of thing but I eyeball them because I got tired of doing all that one day what I do is I look at the top of this I see it at the top of the slot from my angle and that's about the same distance each time you do this Cut that one a little wide. I don't think I can get it in there but okay I'm zoomed up and I'm just let me show you where your hand will, will be cut off move to the right it's cut off okay. completely yeah if I can work in here yeah yeah okay cool perfect all right ready okay step here is we're gonna put uh, the conchos on here Five-eighths on the steel. Punch those. And go ahead and mark this one. This is my buddy Tippy right here. He's my my faithful one right there. He's a good boy. Yeah, he's my buddy. Alrighty there. Now we're gonna get some of this. Logan? We're filming right now. Oh, okay. He's up against the door with the camera. Sorry, I didn't know. That's all right. And now I'm going to make the uh, tie downs. The car shows. Cut two of those out.
this is how they tie down a saddle to the tree. Kind of slid in that one there and then this one here. And pull it tight. Be careful, don't. You know, you'll have to start all over again, but then you put it up through that hole. And then, there you go. Same way on this one. Make sure it's down there low. Where it'll pull up next to that bar. Pull it tight. Put your finger down here. I'll hold it down there like that to hold it tight. Pull that one. Hold it up to the bar. Alright. The next step to the little diamond. But on Stevie's, just to go through the story, this is the original kind of concho that went on here. If you look at the first a um, couple of magazines that he had come out with it. You can see this scallop. And then later on he went to this because he rusted this one out. And um, it fell off one day and they had to go get another one of these. And then it had a tip on it. Like this. Which I can't get anymore. They don't make them anymore. And the diamond I put on his was this one with the little ridges around the edges. Kind of but that was the original that went on there and geez I've only got one myself if anybody out there knows where you can find me a couple of those let me know that would be awesome do some horse trading with you alright let's put this diamond on here You want to kind of just bend them over. You don't want to smash it. Bend those torques over. But they're underneath. Nobody's going to see that. So. The next step. Step is the tailpiece. I have some already made. Um, and I just pull them out when I need them because I'm it's one part of the thing I can do and not have to stop and make them.
Look it up. And according to how, what people, how long they want it, a lot of times I'll make this strap usually about 40 inches long, the basis of it. Yeah, this is 39. Well, it's 40. But if somebody's a bass player or somebody plays real low, you can make the tailpiece to make for the rest of it so you can cut that out and cut you a long piece and put it on them and measure it and then cut it off. To the length of thing, but it looks nice when it's woven all the way through like this. Instead of having to move this down, you got these holes. It's better just cut them long and fit it to the person afterwards. I don't mind the waste. I like to satisfy the customer, but I, I like this when it's all woven, all those slits. It looks better, and this comes out on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. And this not it won't be coming up from the bottom. And then this sits up like that. And it doesn't look good. Just on the top holds that down. Look makes it look better. And then we uh, have to punch the holes here for the A lot of times I'll put a second hole back there just in case somebody has a guitar and they want to make an adjustment. And I used to use a, I don't recommend trying to use a razor blade or cutting it that way. I've cut my hands and slipped off and it's cut the top of the leather. I've gotten to where I just take a good pair of these good scissors and just take that like that. Put some pressure on it with your hand right there and they'll cut right through it. Just don't go too far. fun part of course I didn't have this stamp when Stevie was around I drew this picture of him and um, a lady her name was Laura Warner and she was with a record company and I gave her a picture of this drawing I did of Stevie and uh, she made me this stamp and I put Stevie's stamp on there God bless him we sure miss him and there's my stamp that comes from Jay Lee's when I learned Jefferson, a stamp I had, Christian's Custom Leather. And my art teacher told me to always sign my work. 
Thank you, Miss Miracle. That was my art teacher in high school. And she taught me a lot. Like take your take a lighter and take all those little all those little threads that I cut off. You want to take them out. You don't have to do it very long. Just get them to where they'll melt. Bonded nylon thread. It's the best friend if you want to use thread because you can. It'll lock off on you like that. All those little things. They'll ball up and they won't pull through. It's called quality control. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. There's a replica of Stevie. You can see how the, the lettering kind of comes up out of there. It's got, it pops up out of there and gives it some dimension. That's why when you stitch right up along with it, it pushes it kind of pushes it up in there. But I hope you've enjoyed watching me make this pleasure to uh, share the experience. Thank you very much.